Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another beautiful episode of the Team Never Quit Podcast. As always, thank you guys for listening and watching, and please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button wherever you get your show. So today, before we get to our very special guest, let's kick it off with our usual Patreon question of the day, which is, what is the coolest place you've ever been, and are you able to go back? Well, that second part's the big part of the question. <laughs> I that's, feel like those are two different that's, questions. That's the, they, they also, those are two different questions. <laughs> two different lives, too. Like, it complicates things. It does when you say if you can, can go, go back. back. Mm-hmm. So is that the most fun we've ever had or the coolest <laughs> place? Coolest place. Well, this is a PG podcast, so... Marcus and I were talking about it the other day that we have really been to some cool places. Oh, man. Oh, y'all sent me that... Uh, Y'all were over there in uh, South Dakota. You sent me a picture of that giant uh, Sasquatch. Oh, yeah. Chainsaw Sasquatch artist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all, y- and y'all were just in the van cruising. I mean, y'all yeah. had to go somewhere, picked up a van, went and saw the whole area. And- yeah. Dude, I was in Mississippi the other day for a, for a dove hunt and had the best time ever. Really? Yeah, so, I mean, that's top of my list right now. You, I didn't think there was that much fun in Mississippi with them boys, but they are. Have you ever been over there hanging oh, out with them? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're a lot of fun. It's you got to get ready. You got to train for that. See, I was I didn't know that. Yeah, you know, you can't I just gotta, walk into that. They, they've been training their gosh, whole life. They do. You, you can tell when they walk into that. Like in that's where we were at. Guys. Oh yeah. yeah, they've been. I mean, they've been workups their whole life for this. And then I got to go to an old Miss game. I've heard that's pretty. Amazing. You never been? Uh-huh. They want to. If you want to know if God exists, go to the Grove during a home game. So I got hold up now. You can't say that in front of an LSU guy. I oh. can't because I, I went there and I raised that LSU guy. So. <laughs> these, Tiger really, down. That's a really good point. Yeah. <laughs> I was at uh, the Naval Academy Prep School, and one of my really great friends, he's a uh, guy named Trey Ray, amazing guy, um, State Department guy. Uh, he would call me. He was on Connolly's Rise to Detail. And well, I'd say, like, hey, lady. I was like, is she as cool as she seems? He goes, Clint's on her. But he would call me on Monday, on Monday mornings and he's like, listen, she's about to ask me a bunch of football questions. I don't know the answer to. So I'd prep him for him and Condoleezza's conversation about Sunday night. Great football. lady. But I went down there to see him and uh, man, my, my dad just passed away and I was at the Naval Academy prep school getting ready to go play Navy and I went down and saw him in Ole Miss and we were at this bar. I don't know what bar it was. But the most beautiful girl I ever saw walk past me this way. The most beautiful girl I ever saw walk past me this way. And I turned and looked, and there was a coach that was there. And he said, hey, if you want to come, we, we, we love that you want to play Navy, but if you want to come to Ole Miss, we can make that happen. I don't feel good when someone says something like it that does. to you. It does. I feel Holy, like that's, the Holy that's Spirit a... was like, you will not. Yeah. <laughs> no. Not and, and it was like right when they had I the, made uh, it. That's, that's right when they had the uh, uh, recruiting violation. Mm-hmm. So can you imagine that if I had left? Annapolis gone. To was this back in this back in the 1900s? Early 90s. Early yeah, back 90s. in the 1900s. Yeah, 19, it was 90. It was the. It was either fall of 92 or the spring of 93. I can't remember which one. That's hilarious. I don't think we've answered the question. No, I think my answer that I would love to go back and buy a house and retire there is Sardinia. Mm. Oh man, yeah, that. I think Amy would agree with you. Sardinia is one of the coolest places it's in that... Northwest Arkansas, right? <laughs> right outside of it. <laughs> you you miss it if you didn't know. Where yeah, you, where you're, yeah, yeah. If you don't know what you're looking for, you blow right past we, it. We watch these Italy oh. documentaries all the time. So this yeah, we're is a if, little island off of Italy, or it's part of Italy, but it's an Italian island, and it is. It was laid back not materialistic yeah. there wasn't touristy places where we were it was like the true cultural area the best. you People have to realize. learn italian too to live there yeah they don't i even got any... yelled at by an italian i loved it yeah it had to sound they cool. did it in a great way yeah you know what i'm talking about like i, I didn't understand i got the what he was trying to say to me it. but it was just kind of like a yeah i don't believe you're happy yeah it, this sounds really cool yeah they don't speak english but it i mean the food was so good the yeah, Beaches when my brother beautiful. becomes president, man, I'm gonna be the ambassador there. We don't have hey, one when yet, he but he becomes president. I'll, I'll, I'll you want to go? I'll tell him this. You should go with. I want to be secretary of war, not defense. We got to change back to war. All right. And I want a van. A <laughs> van. And I think you should we're... have a parking spot too. <laughs> well, so when we're traveling domestically, I want a van. Yeah. And internationally, I want to get the USS Texas BB-35 back up and going, and we're gonna steam and go meet with people. That's a good idea. I like it. That's a good idea. That's a great way to meet. I want to pair it. 
of course you, you still have to go to, <laughs> on your yeah, shoulder yeah yeah oh my what God. about you you've been all the places that you've been so far yeah wow. you're on a bend right yeah, now yeah well man. the place that's most fresh on my mind i gotta say tromso norway go see the northern lights i mean the people that live over there can literally just look up every single night at least in certain times of the year and they'll be they told me stories of them cooking dinner and just looking outside their window and does it just the defy Lights. description does it just defy description like every picture you see every video you see you're like no nah, that's not it that's it just it just doesn't get close to it every time you look at it i heard it's different so yeah i mean i saw some pretty amazing lights but i've heard that there's even better ones out there which is baffling to me because I got to see that now. See, that's how you feel every time you look at Mel and how every, yeah. how, every time I look at Amy. That's how I feel. I got this recorded, so I'll pull that stuff out. That'll yeah. be a card yeah. to put down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we should print a lot of those out and send them out to the boys, too. A hundred percent. Hey, say this. You know what I mean? Like anniversary uh, go bags for team guys. And then you got Christmas go bags. Yeah. Like if you're in a pinch, yeah. man, like if you, if you don't, if you forgot to order some shit, we yeah. got a place you can do Here that. It goes. 100% like a little sky mall yeah like I forgot little sky yeah for mall, team guys man team guys, sky mall exactly just like that when I mentor these young married couples they're like I was like hey wait you suck <laughs> so what I, yeah you're so a mentor now we, well they ask questions and I answer them I don't That's know if that enough. qualifies <laughs> but I've always called Amy my bride right and then I, I say listen always call her your bride and always remember the day you got married and they're like why I say because I don't I'm not good at math so people go, hey, when did you and Amy get married? I'm like, June 21st, 1997. Like, you do the math. I'm not doing the math. It gets harder every year. Like, 24 months. But I remember no, the day. June 21st, 1997. One, I sound like a rock star. Yeah. Two, I don't <laughs> have to do the math. So yeah. do you put the day in there? No, I just say June 21st, 1997. Do you feel if you put the day in there that that would add something? Like a little more I, kick? It would, but there's also potential for failure. Like right? if you went like, oh, that was a Monday, by the way. Then it's a Saturday. And it was sunny? It Saturday, I'm going to do that. Saturday, June 21st, 1997. Does it have yeah. to be on a Saturday? Well, that's like when it was. It was on a Saturday. Most people get married on Saturday. I should probably make I think they did that for us. So guys would always remember that it was on a Saturday. Sure it was a Saturday. I'm pretty confident it was a Saturday. Yeah, when's your anniversary? Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> no, you got to put it at the end, though. It's, it's Saturday. 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 Yeah. Saturday. And then the other thing, they go, why do you call her your bride? I say, because I'm married again today. That's why I call her my bride. And so all her friends, we were sitting around at dinner one time. Our friend's like, oh, that's so sweet. And I'm like, babe, why don't you call me your groom? And she's like, sounds dumb. Mm. I was like, oh, all right. Well, there, there you we go. think that's short for give me but, some room? There we go. Like after one. a while, it's like, like, it just sounds freaking dumb. always around. Like, all right, there we go. So, yeah, the go bag, the anniversary, birthday, significant date, go bag. That's another. Throw that in there with the rare B&B idea we just had. Mm -hmm. And Hunter, be, man, is a small portfolio of asymmetrically successful companies. So that's kind of what I want to turn this thing into is one of those when, when our kids get old enough, it's like yeah. uh, Captain's Log. Oh yeah, star date. star date. This is you know this that and the other. And that's it. Hey, we, we've given I've given you an example of every great person I can find in every scenario. If you get into one, that's really cool. You know what I mean? And what I wanted to now that you're that you thanks for happy Happy New Year by the way. Hey man, thank you. Happy New Year. I want to talk about buds because I mean like really talk about that. How much fun that was. Yeah. And then but go back to the Naval Academy because I you know I, I'm a recent graduate from. The I know Academy. you're a distinguished graduate. You don't have to salute me right now or anything like that. <laughs> Technically, my linear, well, my linear I mean, you want to, you can, but not, not, not inside. I'm not, it, it I'm not dressed be, up. It would be awkward. And I don't know if he's framed that in or not well. Right? <laughs> but uh, I would say my, my Naval Academy career was marked by ath athletic overachievement and academic How did you find out about it? How to find out about the Naval Academy? Yeah, were you destined to go there? Magnum or? PI. That's a great way to say that. Uh, listen, I, it's, it's funny. It's not funny. I got a chance it's to meet Tom funny. Selleck. Oh man, Are we, that's a whole nother. I mean, I got so one of the questions I know you get asked, I get asked all the time. He's the one that got me shooting for Beretta. Oh, that's really cool. He, it, it was beyond cool. That's what I got to do when I got out. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Go back. Well, so so one of the questions I get asked all the time is when do you when do, when do you when do you want to be a Navy SEAL, right? And for most of my life, I've never been able to answer the question. I just don't remember not wanting to be one. But I couldn't point to this genesis moment of hey, this is when I want to be a Navy SEAL, right? Until COVID. So COVID and quarantine. See how team got janky shit? This fell uh, off like don't that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's, broken. it's nature. This is what we do. We just break stuff. Uh, I do anyway. It's my gift, right? And uh, so, I, you know, I have my three daughters, uh, Maddie, Lily, Claire, Sutton, Rose. 
And Maddie goes, hey, Dad, you want to watch Magnum P.I.? I'm like, absolutely, I want to watch Magnum P.I. And she turns on the new one. I'm like, oh, stop. We're not watching the new one. So we go back to 1980s Magnum P.I. Yeah, I hadn't I'm, seen the new one either. Don't. Don't. Yeah, no, right, yeah. Listen, they're doing their best, but there's just some things you don't try to remake, right? And it was actually a really amazing show. It was really progressive. It was one of the first shows to really talk about kind of veterans coming home from war and and you know, TC saved Magnum. Dude, they lived in Hawaii, and he drove a damn Ferrari. And and, and, T, and, and TC was the entrepreneur. You know, yeah. so, so diversity, and it was a really cool movie. So, so we start watching the new one, right? Oh, the old one. And then somewhere in the second season, there's an episode where they reveal that the character Thomas Magnum played football at the Naval Academy, and he was a Navy SEAL. And all of a sudden, I had this hyper clear memory. It wasn't repressed. It just, you know, you don't think about that. And all of a sudden, I remember watching Magnum P.I. with my dad, Thursday nights at 8 p.m., Little Rock, Arkansas. And I just had this hyper-lucid memory of this chubby little Clint looking up at my dad going, hey, Dad, I'm going to play football at the Naval Academy and be a Navy SEAL. And my dad was <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> and that's where the whole that's thing started. started. So I never didn't have a plan. Now, there were other things I was going to do, but my fallback plan was go to the Naval Academy and be a Navy SEAL. And I didn't even realize how deeply that That's is. a seed. That's yeah, what that was. That was 100%. a seed being planted. I never didn't have a commander's intent. As, as, as crazy as that. How to get it done is a completely different story altogether. You don't don't worry about that well, part of the young age. Realistic. And, and so then what happened is, you know, I loved football way before football loved me. I mean, I was the fifth string fullback in eighth grade. Brandenburg Middle School. There were three other fullbacks. Let's do the math on that one. Hmm. And my parents were like, listen, we, we don't mind that you're the fifth string fullback. What upsets us is they printed it up in the program. Yeah. <laughs> so Thursday night at Homer B. Johnson Stadium, it's one, two, three, blank, five. And my dad is like, son, if you don't have the athletic ability to score touchdowns, and you don't, I hate those who do. I'm like, well, who does that? He goes, linebackers. I'm like, all right. So I watched some Dick Buckus stuff, and I was like, I'm going to do that. How great are that? Hey, those those highlights right there. Man, Him and Lawrence Taylor. 100%. I'll throw those suckers on Jack and get Lambert, fired up. Just you know, Sam hammer Hull. down. And Randy White, the manster, right? <laughs> And so, and I tell people, like, my gift is not being gifted because I've always had to figure it out, right? So, indirectly, my football career is blessed by not being good at football. And that's why I tell people, like, man, do, do stuff that you're not easy now, hard later, hard now, easy later. That's the only two ways of it. And so, I had to play football. Oh, yeah, go out and look for your suffering, and your suffering will come looking for you, man, either way. 100%. 100%. I said, you got to run at the hard stuff, right? And, and so, I kept playing football because that's where my friends were. I wanted to be part of something bigger than me. But what happened was I played scout team. And so what happens in the scout team is you get three to four reps for every one rep that the talented kids got. So all of a sudden, I'm getting reps. I'm massing this knowledge. And on scout team, you play all the different positions. Yeah. What is scout team? It's you're the, you're the uh, you're role playing. So you're pretending you're the team that the team's about to play, right? So you're, you're, you're taking North Garland's playbook, and you're pretending you're North Garland before South got Garland it. plays North Garland. So it's, it. it's, it's where the guys who aren't good enough to play play during the week. We play okay. during the week. The good guys play on the weekend. Right? Got it. And, and so a couple things happen. Like role players. Yeah. If you're in the military, it's op four. Oh, you're op four, right? Yeah, something and, 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 and Rudy. Rudy is a Started there. player, right? Okay. So, so Great happened, movie, by the way. Fantastic movie. So what happened is, is I, I, I had you know, probably five or six reps for every rep that one of my talented friends had. And I had these different positions on the field. So I never started a game until halfway through my junior season in high school against the school that my daughters go to now, Pierce. And it's kind of a funny story. We were up by 20-something, and one guy got hurt. Another guy got kicked off the team. And my position coach will tell you to this day, he wouldn't make eye contact with the head coach when he put me in because he thought he was going to get in trouble for putting Clint Bruce in. And it gets worse. My dad's in the stands filming. And on <laughs> camera, you hear everyone say, Richard, Clint's in, Clint's in. And on camera, my dad says, Clint's not in. Clint's never in. I come in, I film y'all's kids. Y'all get me all excited. And all of a sudden, you hear this sack made by Clint Bruce, and then the game just made sense to me. And I tell people all the time, it's like, being not good made me good. Because I'll remember that first play. I stepped on the field halfway, the second half against J.J. Pierce, and I remember looking at the guard as a linebacker, and I'm like, huh, when I play guard on scout team and I'm going to pull, I sit back a little bit, so I bet he's going to pull. And it was this institutional knowledge, just these repetitions that I gained – about the game by willing by willing to do something I wasn't good at long enough to then become good at it. And then, you know, became pretty good at football. And then my senior year, we were really good. Had a lot of opportunities to go play different places, but my dad got sick. And I remember I remember going to the hospital and seeing my dad and, and uh, 
remember him saying something effective like, son, you got to make a 40-year decision and not a four-year decision about what you do next because this may not work out. And I was not ready to hear my dad say that, right? And I remember getting mad because I thought he was kind of, I just didn't want him to, you know, the power of positive thinking, all this other stuff. And I remember he grabbed my wrist. And I, when he grabbed my wrist, I, we just read Beowulf in high school. And there's a scene in Beowulf where Beowulf grabs Grendel. And all of a sudden, the story switches to Grendel's perspective. And Grendel says he'd never been grabbed by a, a man like that before, the power and strength. And my dad had declined so much physically. He was a big, powerful guy when he went in the hospital. When he passed away, I could carry him. Mm -hmm. arm, right? When he grabbed my wrist, I realized how powerful he still was. And he looked at me. He said, son, leaders talk about what they don't want to talk about. They say what they don't want to say. They listen to what they don't want to listen to, and they plan for what they don't want to happen. And the willingness to do that is what makes them a leader. And right then, I, I'd always paid attention to the Army-Navy game, Magnum P.I., but then I was just like, okay, I got to go somewhere where I can take care of my brother and my sister and my mom. Oh, after makes me cry. <laughs> and, it, and it became this, um, you know, I told the guy who recruited me at the Naval Academy, I said, I want to be a Navy SEAL. He's like, yeah, you just tell him. You just tell him you want to be a Navy SEAL. Yeah, he's, tell him that. He's a liar. Yeah. That, is not, that is not how that one goes <laughs> at all. And uh, What year was this? This was 91 all right, when right. I started getting recruited. 92, I graduated from high school. 93, I went to the prep school, Naval Academy prep school up in Newport, Rhode Island. What's that like? Well, wait. The 13th grade? The, getting into... <laughs> I'm sorry. I've got tears. Listen, I, um, So getting into the Naval hard. Academy is really hard. Well, Don't you have to it get... is extremely hard now. And I, it probably was then. Uh -huh. But we had just beat Iraq in like 36 minutes during Desert Storm. Mm -hmm. I think there was a reduction in force. Uh, Sam, Houston, Sam uh, Johnson had just gotten elected. And I, I'm not sure he totally knew the significance of his Academy nominations. So he's just like, yeah, I was Clint Bruce. Yeah, we're gonna but don't you have to like visit a congressman or something? Yeah, yeah, and, and that was Congressman Johnson. And then, and then, uh, but it's so funny. So Congressman Johnson gave me my nomination, and before he passed away, he told me that it was the most risky political decision he ever made. <laughs> I was like, what? How did he, he say goes, that to you right yeah, then? And there, no, he got no. He said some. But yeah, he said that, and he goes, yeah, I didn't really know about those nominations when I nominated you that first year. And I said, well, I kind of sense that because <laughs> you know, buried my father and. Went to this thing at Congressman Johnson's office. I'll never forget this. My mom and I went up there, and, and it was like Dean Driscoll, my roommate at the Naval Academy, and Lisa Sharoma and Jack Pritchard, these really, really accomplished Naval Academy graduates. And Dean and I ended up being roommates, and he's who introduced me to Amy. And Congressman Johnson's going down the row. You know, you made all A's. You won the science fair. Uh, you never missed a day of school. And he gets to me, 15 kids, and he goes, Clint. Just go up there and turn that football team around, son. <laughs> well, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> so, so I think there were some accommodations made. Uh, I mean, I tested pretty well in the SAT and ACT stuff. My grades weren't great, but I, you know, I think that's just where God wanted me to go, man, because, I mean, that explains as much of me getting in there as anything else. And, yeah. if, and I think about this. If I had a, you know, I was six foot, 230 pounds, and pissed when I was 18, and strong and I'd fight in a heartbeat, right? But it had to be for a good reason. Like I don't, I could only fight if, fight if it was virtuous or noble, but it was my interpretation. I was like, well, he looks like he's about to do something bad. Let's just go. <laughs> a little bit of minority report in that one. Like, That's what it was. Yeah. It, it <laughs> was, he was, hey, don't it, be mad at me. You can spot those. 100%. I feel like in the late nineties, that's what we were doing is like, you could, that was part of the deal. You so, go out and you'd be looking for someone who was looking for it. That's right. And when you spotted one, then it was all go. And it's the ones that don't make eye contact with you that you start going, oh, the bad guys don't make eye contact with you. And, you know, and, and, and then you get in the mad ball and you start figuring it out. So probably good that I went to Naval Academy because all I know is I'm this six foot, 230 pound benching three something, but all this other stuff. And in the fall of that year, I had a Marine Corps Force Recon gunny with his chest his finger in my chest going you want me to take you down and i was like i i think he can i think he <laughs> wants to and i should probably listen to what he wants me to do so right. it's your free time about your plebe summer this is, this is my naval academy prep school year so if you're going to play sports for the naval academy what's the difference between that and when you just show up to the naval academy uh, it's, it's kind of like a red shirt in a way i mean the, the naval Explain academy that. naval academy prep school is. i want to get i'm trying to recruit now for the naval academy yeah, well, here, yeah. we're trying to recruit yeah, yeah, this, this is a recruiting video for, for the freaking Na now here, damn right i do you. man here to tell you that 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 ability to physically emotionally uh and intellectually mature between 18 and 19 is significant that's why we have red shirts and most that's why most of these players are taking five six years to graduate right 
So the prep school program at the service academies are the uh, parallel to that. The, the chance to kind of uh, get academically, intellectually, and physically where you need to be to compete at a high Is level. Is Navy allowed to recruit? Oh, yeah, 100%. So they, they send scouts out to them because, I mean, we have an yeah. unlimited budget. I figure we should have the best football team. You think, you think. I mean, there, there's got to be a way that we could be able to play with the other kids. Yeah. And that if you, your service to yeah. the Navy is if you played four yeah, freaking years. Hey, listen, that's why we won national championships in World War II and World War One. But I'll tell you, Notre why, Dame. Why, do we, why, why is that not right? Why, Notre what am Dame I missing? Notre Dame likes playing us more than Al-Qaeda does. Uh, we, you I'm, know. I, well, that's fun, too. I think if we. I, I'll tell you a funny story. There's this legendary. I think we need to open up our way of thinking when it comes to football because the other academies are getting paid. There's this legendary story. There's a legendary story of the first time. Lou Holtz was coaching at uh, Minnesota, and they went to the Naval Academy to play. And Minnesota, I think, was a better team than Naval Academy at the time. And the story is, is players are really intimidated. And Lou Holtz goes, why are you so intimidated? We're a better football team than them. And they started pointing to the battles on the wall. And they said, well, look at who they've already beat. And that's true. You know, you were there. You were at graduation. Yeah. You, and I remember when I went up there for my recruiting. I've always wanted to be a part of something bigger than me that scared me a little bit that I was going to have to work hard to keep up with. And I just That's how it. I felt in the team in buds every day. Every day in the teams, in the I teams, felt every day. just like every that day. every day. Every day, and, and I, by design, by design. If if, if if I'm the apex predator in this room, I'm the wrong room. Like I, I want to be. That would happen room. to me too. We're getting ahead of ourselves too. When I, but I, when I would walk into a room full of team guys, if I didn't know them, mm -hmm. I'd back up. Right. So at the Naval I still Academy, do that. We, that's our nature. At the Naval Academy, the classes are hard. Very. It is. It's a very yes. difficult school to get through. Yes. It's so small classes though. Yeah, there's no hiding. <laughs> yeah, that's my point. There's no hiding. I guess that's the best way to say that. Yeah, it's like, hey man, no, when your ass is in there, they know. I will tell you that my professors respected effort mm. as much as they respected outcome. Okay, because there's a lot more that goes into showing your ass up and put, because that's the difference between the state schools. Like they actually make you get an education and there's somebody that's, that's helping you along if you need that little extra yeah. guidance. There's yeah. people... And your classmates care about you. Oh, In state class. school, they give a damn. That, that's how it works. I will tell you, I've always made it a point to never be the smartest person in the room. And that's never been easier than at the Naval Academy. <laughs> <laughs> that's the easiest it's ever been. I was in my first class. And this kid, I don't want to say his name, he's still serving. He's incredible. Is he Admiral now? Yeah, he's about, yeah, he is. And he'll, he'll run the whole show, right? <laughs> but we were in calculus. And I was just, the only answer I'd gotten right was roll. <laughs> I'm like Bruce, I'm like here. After that, it was awful. And the professor was drawing something on the board, and and he pressed, and, and this guy goes, "It would be easier if you just did this." Invented a new theorem, like right there. And the professor's like, "We'll name the theorem after you, everything." And I looked over and I said, "Listen, no one's going to stick your head in a toilet for four years, and ever, you're, and you're going to get me out of this place." Yeah. <laughs> so it was like our own little jump, Twenty One Jump Street kind of thing. I feel like, like those are gifts from God when guys like us are sitting around this, guys like that this, that I get picked on, hey, but are real smart. I'm like, hey, look, you you want a buddy? That's it. No one will ever mess with you ever uh, again. The word is simpatico. Yeah, right? I, I, I remember. I, I like felt, those tech geniuses, yeah. if they don't have a Navy SEAL at hey, their hip, there's a reason you or I are on this side of all those oh. wires, right? <laughs> I'll look out for you. You just watch my back don't, and don't my, do crazy shit. The comms guys would put my pack on. They're like, hey, sir, don't touch the radio. We got I'm it. Like, I'm like, got Roger it, that. Right. Yeah. The next thing I, I was like, hey, man, it's not working. They're like, you touch it? I'm like, no. They're like, well, it's off. I'm like, well, it's getting hot. Like, I was like, so you did touch it? Like, well, I, yeah, I didn't reprogram it, but yeah, I touched it, right? And yeah. so they're just like, don't touch it. And you give it to me, right? And But I, I feel this one physics test so bad. And the professor, like, wrote the whole test in, like, for me, he's like Notre Dame's running back takes off at 36 miles per hour, 26 degree angle. And he called me in. He goes, Clint, are you trying to fail? I said, no, sir. And he goes, well, we've done these studies. If someone studies this much, they make this grade. If someone studies this much, they make this grade. This is random guessing, and this is you. He goes, are you trying to fail? I'm like, no, nah, I'm just good at it. It's just, it's just a gift I have, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so it was, a, it was a hard place, but I was, I was trying. And... And I, I think one of the neat things at service academies and Naval Academy in particular is a lot of your instructors are, are military, they're professionals. So one of the reasons I love about our pipeline and the SEAL teams is we all go through it together. And one of the things- Oh, that's what makes us what we are. It, and, and one of the things at the end of the day, if your instructors let you make it through, they're eventually agreeing to, to do a platoon with you. And like my first, my second- You platoon, don't understand that going through, man. Mm -mm, my, Even I, if they told you what that meant. You, you didn't get it. The only thing I could think of that would give incentive, and I, I, 
maybe I watched this saw it on Top Gun. Do the Top Gun boys do this? They got their pins, but their names already on it, but they're not allowed to touch them. I don't know. Imagine yeah. like a wall with the tridents on it, and then you got your your name is on your trident yeah. waiting on you. We we didn't have that. No. Matter of fact, you. You never even touched a freaking trident before yeah, you got yeah, one pinned on you. It was bad luck. I remember a kid showed up at Buds with one already tattooed. I've on. heard that was the story. I never was, that I, wasn't in my I, class, he, he but I've heard it that. Out of PTRR. He they, was, they he usually was done, don't. He was done before the class up, right? So when you're in the academy and you're playing football, because mm -hmm. being a SEAL is a big deal for the academy guys. That's it's not an easy. Big, big it's hard, right? Real big deal. Yeah, and in the in the in the selection. Why process, is it so hard? Well, because there's so many guys that that's what they do when, when they want to go there. And then, you know, there's only, like, when I went through, there were 16 guys uh, selected. And McGreevy and I are the same classmates. Yeah, Mikey. And I got picked. And, and Groove, I was always blown away by how magnanimous he was. He's the smoothest son of a guy. When I got picked. Yeah. He made it a point to come to me. He's like, hey, I'll see you there. And yeah. I was like, because I felt like, you know, I, I was one of these 16 guys picked. And I was looking at these other 15 guys, Walter, you know, and. And I was like, man, I don't, Henry, I was like, I don't belong here. And then I look at someone like Groove, I was like, how did I make it? And, and my whole deal, Rhino, you know, my whole deal is like. Those names right there, you could say those to any team guy. And they're they know amazing. exactly who you're talking about. They're amazing. And I'm sitting there, I was like, okay, I, I can't, I can't fully answer why I got picked, but I'm not going to waste it. Are you ready to make 2024 your year of financial wins? Meet Navy Federal Credit Union, the place where banking isn't just what they do, it's who they are. Embracing this new year with Navy Federal can mean more than $470 stacked in your pocket every single year. And with up to 1.75% cash back on all purchases using the cash rewards card, Navy Federal members are simply making their money work for them. And guess what? Redeeming these rewards has never been easier just using the user-friendly mobile app. At Navy Federal, it is all about our members steering the ship. So go dive into more details at NavyFederal.org and let's power your financial success this year. Membership is required. Navy Federal is insured by the NCUA. And for the essential scoop and everything you need to know, go head on over to NavyFederal.org because at Navy Federal Credit Union, our members are the mission. I've always had this kind of Forrest Gumpian kind of life. Like, I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here. I don't know why she said yes, but she did. So I'm going to use it till someone finds me out until God calls me home. And so, and we were really fortunate. We, you know, I, I tell people later, like, why'd you go to the Naval Academy? I'm like, one, I want to take care of my family. But two, I wanted to see how good I was. If you go to a team that won a national championship and they win another national championship, there's a part of you that wonders how much you that did. If you go to a team that didn't win a lot and all of a sudden they win a lot, you know that you made a part of that. And like, oh, I'm to the Dale Academy. Like, I played for four years. And the reason you play for four years is you're really good or the team you join is not really good. And you can look at the Naval Academy record in the early 90s and figure out pretty quickly. I mean, we had amazing guys, incredible athletes. It just wasn't working, right? And then, you know. Is that a coaching thing? Yeah, I think a lot of it was a coaching thing. It was a system thing. Because if you got a bunch of badasses and you can't make them work. 100%. And you got to run a system that's right for the players you get, right? That's right. And so my senior year, you know, I beat Beef and I played together. You know, he's a year behind me. I mean, I played with amazing guys, but we had a system. I mean, the coaches that came in and coached my senior year, Paul Johnson, former head coach of Georgia Tech, Gary Patterson, head coach of TCU, Phil Emery, former general manager of the – uh, Chicago Bears player person out Atlanta Falcons. I feel like Charlie we should be able to pay our coach, our football coaches, a badass salary, and then they don't have to pay taxes. I, I mean, because you know, they're working for the government or something well, like that. And also, I think they're especially service. And we give them a detail. Service academy coach. <laughs> service academy. Coaches, you know what I mean? I, I tell my service academy coaches all the time. Kenny Niamatololo, he's over at UCLA now. I said, "You got guys ready for war as much as you did football. Like you have no idea how many lives you saved." on the battlefield because of what you taught us on the ball field, right? Yeah, think about the mentality. Yeah. I mean, the ones at the server academies want to go to, they'll go to war. Mm -hmm. they, they really will. That's, that's, I got interviewed. Like, they're going to get, they're already signed up for that. Man, I got interviewed by So ESPN. if you can't train them, you, you they, I, I asked Saban one time, I spoke at Alabama. I mean, you can't coach them like other teams, I would imagine. I, I asked Saban that, and, and when he, because he coached at Navy in the early 80s. Yeah. And he said, he, he goes, it was pure football when I was coaching there. And he goes, and I loved it. You're playing, you're coaching Division One talent, and he coached players that ended up beating South Carolina when South Carolina was number two in the nation, right? So, 
you have real talent there, but you have kids that want to play football so bad they're willing to serve for five years after that. And, and like, for me, you know, I, I, I got interviewed by ESPN, I think it was probably 10, 12 years ago or something like that, and they were asking about rivalry games. And they said, what do you think? And I said, listen, I love rivalry games. I think rivalry games are great. I list these, I said, um, I said, what do you all think? And they list these off. I said, those are great games, but Army Navy stands apart. And they go, what do you mean? I said, you show me another game where everybody playing is willing to die for everybody watching, and I'll tell you that we have company. And, and they, they, they let us fight each other. Yeah, like brothers do, right? And, 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 and so I was incredibly – my little brother played Oklahoma State, and he's jealous of the relationship I have with the guys I played with. It was because we went through more together. And then, like, we didn't – at, at Navy football, but, like, it, it's not metaphor. Like, when you go to most football teams, like, I was doing the NFL thing. You know, hey, play like the guys next year's life depends on it. That's a metaphor. Hill Academy, Tom Rhino's right here next to me. We're about to take a snap together. That That's going to be real. Tom Poulter, defensive end, fighter pilot. I mean, so all the intangibles that everybody else plays for aren't intangible to us at the service academies and the Naval Academy when I played. And that's why it was so easy for me to leave the NFL. It was so easy for me to leave the NFL because what I loved most was there less. Not that it wasn't there. Because, you know, I, I played at Baltimore with, with – well, there's another reason I left the NFL is I played the same position as Ray Lewis at Baltimore. <laughs> oh. And I was like, mm. it, it might be easier. He's a different type of human, too. I said, it might be easier to make it. He's another one I watch. Hey, let me tell you what. He's a special guy. And yeah. this is his second year. So this is – so I graduated in 97. Went to Baltimore in summer of 97. It was Ray's second year. So no one knew how great he was going to be, but we all knew he was different. And a lot of people don't understand how wide he is. I mean, he is a wide human being. And two, he's quick, and then three, he's a pro. And he was becoming a pro then. So it was his personality. So it was, I mean, that guy is freaking, oh, man. I mean, I'll tell you, I don't tell a lot of people this story, but I'm about to tell as many people as watching this story. But I remember when I was, I was, when I was at the Ravens, I decided I wanted to go. So I was going to go to Bud's in February of 98. So I was going to play that season. I'd made the team at the Ravens, and I was going to play, and then I was going to go to Bud's right after one season, right? And then do seals and maybe come out and do what David Robinson did, whatever, right? So I remember in camp and a guy got hurt and Walter, you know, our, our, our friend, uh, reached out to me and said, hey, you can, you can start earlier if you want to because an O, not a Naval Academy, no, an ROTC guy quit. So I called Amy. I said, hey, we got to go. And I remember I went up to Marvin Lewis, who was the D coordinator at the time, Ozzy Newsom, and I said, I got to go. Like, I, 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 Listen, I love this. This is an amazing opportunity. I'm, I'm so privileged to be here. Um, but everything I learned here is going to be something I already know. It's going to be, it's going to be, a, and I got to go where I don't know. Like that's, that's, that's just where I, I got to go where it's harder because you're going to learn about yourself when you go where you don't know. Right. And I remember I said it in the, and I don't know if Ray remembers this or not, but I was in a, I was in a linebacker meeting room and I told everybody I was going to leave and go serve. And Ray stood up and he grabbed me by both shoulders and he said, go be great. Go be great. He got emotional. I got emotional. Right? Mm-hmm. And so I think it was 10, maybe 12 years later, I go back to the Ravens to speak. And then, uh, like, when I was there, we were at Towson. It was like a converted racquetball. <laughs> right? I mean, it was it, now they're this, the house that Ray and Ed and everybody He built. just went there. I was it's just beautiful. there. The castle. It's incredible. It's, yeah, it's incredible, it's all incredible. right. Mm-hmm. So that's the house. That whole there. organization's awesome. They're unbelievable, man. So I, I went in there. To, to see everybody and speak to the team and and I turn right and I think they collect seals man because they, and that's fine with me yeah well, they got me a long time ago I love that place it's special man <laughs> and and I saw Ray and I go Ray and he goes Navy and I said yeah and he goes I heard you were dead I'm like nope if I am you are too man and and I put my hands on his shoulders I don't know if he remembers this but I said go be great and I and it was just this really cool kind of first full circle moment and that was I think that was – it was either the year he won the Super Bowl was last year or his la- the second of last year. But he's one of these dudes like, well, I'll tell about Ray. And other guys had this in a league, but every almost every guy had it in the teams. Like you get that look in your eyes where you just know what someone's willing to do. And I need that. Like I need to be around guys who – I think you heard me say this. I have this kind of chase, pace, and pull theory. Like a lot of life is going to – think about what happens if you catch what you're chasing. What's life going to be like if you actually catch what you're chasing? And then you got to keep pace with people that are going to leave you behind if you don't put out, right? Because that keeps you honest. And you got to pull someone behind you. And you know how we do that? It's because everyone thinks the other person is trying to, is, is thinking that. Yeah. 
It's like this. It's like this hyper. However, that was created. It's it's beautiful. Once it started, it won't stop because it's it's it's, it's self perpetuating. It's self perpetuating. It's, it's, it's fusion or fusion, whichever it, it one is. that is. I'm sure I learned that. It's maybe. pretty. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's a good word though. Yeah, it is. I'm Have you used it in a while? No, no. I don't know because I feel it's pretty smooth sure. when you threw it out there. Though. The uh, I I'll, I will say it with conviction. Whether I'm right, I use I do this all the time. They're like they're like that's not what that word means, but he said it with such conviction. Yeah, maybe we're fit, wrong. Right maybe, should mean that. Maybe we're wrong. Yeah, he's right. But I was down with one of these other with, with these football teams and like how do you make sure you're a great teammate? I said, Well, if if your policy is to be the first to the hurt, be first to the hurt and stay at the hurt the longest. And I run around with communities and we get into arguments about who the most responsible is. I mean, I'd achieve this like, hey, it's my fault. I'm like, You're on leave. Like, how's that your fault? You're on like, I should have known better. And like, like, right, right, but yeah, like yeah. you're in these arguments on who's most responsible or who gets to hurt the first and who gets to hurt the most. Like when you're in a circle that does that, then you're going to have a life like this, mm-hmm. like like we all get to have, right? And so that's why leaving the league was was easy because it's like that in there. Is the league, what's the, the, the when you go when you get into the league as I, a, as a new guy? What does yeah. that feel like? It it, it wasn't as intimidating as a, as a new guy at a, at, a, at a team at a team, right? That's terrifying. Yeah, I mean, you're just like everyone. They wants, want to kill you. Every, Everybody wants to kill you. And they can. And, and they can. And, they you know, and, to, and, and you've heard about them yeah, doing you know, it. Like that guy. I mean, I, no I, one likes new guys. No, no. You don't even like yourself. No. Nope. Like, I, I don't like me. Like, I, and, and, and so for me, it was a, I felt much more, when I say, uh, I felt much more uncomfortable in the SEAL teams that I did in the NFL. And that's where I needed to be. I needed to be uncomfortable. My early 20s, Man, oh if, yeah, if, yeah, you, yeah. If you reject comfort in your teens and your twenties, you're gonna find a virtuous, noble version of it as you get older, right? And and so I just, for, for me, you know, so you know, two seventeen. Is that what you went in? Yeah, I went through a butt. The Rhino and I went through day one, week one, all the way together. I remember we were, there's a big, we got in a big old fight back in the cages, and Rhino was involved, and, and uh, I don't know why I'm being guarded by it. It's not like there's a statute of limitations. Yeah, we're all out and retired. Well, one of the, I, Rhino's one of, out too. One of the guys called me. That, the one of the guys was like, "Sir, why does Mr. Rhino hate us?" I'm like, Mr. "He hates everybody." Yeah, that's the way he was. I guess it's the way he is. He left his brother at the Naval Academy. That's a funny story about him. We got done with practice. Uh, we always practice on Thanksgiving because Army Navy games next week. And so his brother goes, "Hey, can you wait five minutes so I can take a shower to practice?" And he, and he goes, "No," and he left him. Oh my God! His little brother had to find a ride home for someone that lived near them because. Because he wouldn't wait for his little brother. Is that not the most rhino? Is that the most? Bro, does that I, I did a, my last deployment in Iraq with him in Ramadi. Oh, oh. freaking hell on earth! We're standing <laughs> out in the field. Our pathfinder, the, all the EOD have been blown to shit. And I walk up and I'm like, "Hey, boss, I think, um, I think they might know we're here." And he goes, "Quit being a pussy, Marcus." Of course, they know we're here. I mean, he didn't get <laughs> the only person I've ever <laughs> come across that he liked was my brother. Yeah. He. He gets along with my brother, and he <laughs> he's my boss. You know, he was terrifying. Rhino is a perfect name for him because that's exactly he, what he is, he man. He has to this day. mind, body, and spirit. That he, man is he what has that the is. greatest hit I've ever seen in Navy football. It was fourth and six. Well, he had the greatest hit I, in the SEAL teams too. I'd gone, freaking... I'd gone to the sidelines because I was. Uh, they pulled me out, put Tom in fourth and six. Air Force made a sweep. Tom hit him. It's the best hit I've ever seen in Navy football. That freaking guy, man. And he goes like this. Ugh. Yeah, and he ran to the sidelines. When you yep. see him, he looks like he would. All do he did was go, mm. and then he ran to the sidelines, and we tried to congratulate him, and he told us to leave him alone. Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> like, oh, right. You like that? I mean, looks just like you think he would too. And that's who I need to be. Freaking around, great right? dude. And, and so, Buds, awesome guy, man. Yeah. And then did did Buds and checked into five, then went back out to the Saints for. Oh. Wait, let's stick at Buds for a minute. Yeah. So you're at Buds. At okay, no, yeah, I want to talk about this. You show 217, was that a winter class or summer? It was a winter class. and I Pure winter or were you a half and oh, half? No, it was, it was pure winter, right? The winter hell week, whole, oh, right, whole deal in. Oh, yeah, right? I like. And all I know is I left training camp, drove, grabbed Amy. We drove to the longest I'd ever run in my entire life was maybe three miles. Did you do mini buds or anything like that? Yeah, I did mini buds. Oh, okay, I did mini buds. Yeah, jump through the ice and everything. Oh, all right. Just, I mean, they, they, they were putting it on. So you kind of had an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to the extent you can, right? Absolutely. All those, all those Absolutely. Are, no matter what you watch and what you see, it's nothing. Uh, my first conditioning run to buds, they were, they, remember, because we had the turbo diesels. Remember, we had the, uh, and, and the, the corpsman was in the back, and he's like, sir, we are committing a safety violation because we are so far back from the rest of your class that we were jeopardizing the safety of the rest of your class. Like, that's how slow you are. Right. <clears throat> Which, just, for an officer, is a big deal. 
Yeah, like listen, especially an academy officer. Man, let me tell you what. In, in, like I, any big guy that's listening, to this here's the secret to big man running. The secret to big man running is this: lean forward until you're about to fall over, then don't. <laughs> just forever before you gotta go. It's Dude, just, it's just dude, control the, fall. That's man. why I don't run either. They kicked my ass. Oh, you, and it kicked it, my ass. I mean, the first time we did the O course. First time we did the O course, they did it al- alphabetically, right? And Angle goes first. And his first run. He's the biggest guy in your class? Oh, oh 100%. What were you weighing? 250. And you're obviously Boat Crew 1, right? Oh, oh I yeah. see Boat Crew oh, 1. Yeah, yeah. Check. All right. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I, I graduated from Buds at 240 something. I was just a big guy, right? All I know is Ankle did the, he did the O course, and he was like a minute off the all time record. And, and I, I, the instructor's trying to look at me as all like instructors. I feel compelled to prepare y'all for the difference that you're about to see this is why you learn some traction between a and b right here so like but but for me i mean i we had a we had a good class man we um what was your first time to run the hill course oh it, i think it was like 11 minutes or something like that i heard I jesse ventura said he did like 47 minutes I, I first time figure out the spider wall my, like i hurt my ankle in camp so i couldn't i couldn't pigeon my ankles in so you can get close to the wall so i fell off the wall so many times i started aiming for one of the instructors i was like well if he gets close enough when I'm about to fall, I'm gonna I'm gonna try his ass, right? which does not endear you. <laughs> That'd have been a great idea to try to do that. And I would almost got in a fight the night, the day before I checked in at Danny's Palm Bar. I didn't know I was wasn't supposed to go. You went to Danny's? Yeah, I didn't know. And buds with my wife. Good for you, man. And a guy was looking at my wife, and I was like, "Code of the hills can't happen." <laughs> oh my god! So I, I was about to fight him. We we're about to fight right there. And then this, all I know is big guy. I won't say his name, but you know. And uh, we're about to fight because he's staring at my wife. It's Code of the Hills. This is what you got to do. And all I know is there's this lean guy with a big old bushy mustache sitting at the bar. And he put his hand on the big guy. And the big guy turned and looked at him, turned and looked at me, and sat down. And I was like, all right, I don't know. I'm not a smart guy. But if that guy told that guy to sit down, and he did, I'm going to go sit down too. <laughs> and then the instructor almost fight ended up being my first phase instructor. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> and it was it – is. And we were going through Hell Week, and I remember Rhino, another Rhino story. They're like, you know, what's your favorite instructor? What's your least favorite instructor? And and I don't know if Clifford was there when y'all were there, but he was just great instructor. Instructor Clifford? Yeah. First race, I, yeah. I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't. I was going to ask you, man. Because when you Gillespie when... was a, the big guy, right? And I go, my least favorite is this guy because I did everything on the football field that he wanted to do. And Rhino goes, would you just shut up? Just <laughs> shut up. Since you've been you've been saying the stupid stuff since 1992, just shut up. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, man, it just happens. <laughs> this is another Rhino story. Just shut up. Man. I was like, man, if I could, my life would be a lot easier on a lot of fronts. That's so. So funny. yeah. So but, who is the, who is your hardest instructor in first phase? Uh, I it, well, Shola and Gekka. Gekka was my Gekka. Gekka was still he. He'll call me and I still get nervous. Okay, I'm a 50 year old man, bro. He's like, hey, I'm I was Dallas. On, you want to have lunch? I'm like, I don't. I was on the golf course <laughs> by myself, yeah, chipping up onto the green, and I hear fucking Latrell, and I mean the same shiver yes. hit my grinder yes. reminder. Yes. I thought about pissing myself a little bit too, man. And I, yeah. I turn around, All he's on the tee box it. by himself. He's yeah. like, you're gonna fucking hurry up with this or what? And I did. I was like, oh, wait, it looks really good. I'll just play through. Play through. Play, yes, to this day. Him, him and the most terrifying man in the SEAL team is probably Calvin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He Sadistic. looks like he would Sadistic. be. I'm smart. Mean, like Hannibal ter- Lecter. Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, Great yeah. dude. Hannibal. My first appointment I was with him. I walk in, he just freaking tagged somebody. Yeah. And was telling me about it. And I was like, and he's a killer too. Yeah. You know, and I was like, a real, like a real one. Amazing. I mean, when, you, when I think team guy, he's the first person pops in my head. Uh, yeah, I mean, the shit was, he would do to us the second phase, man. And then I, we had, uh, uh, we, yeah, we had, we had some. <laughs> I say his name to every guy, and they're like, oh, yeah, I him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm speaking good about him. I would never say anything bad about you, instructor, ever. No. <laughs> <laughs> still to this not, very not, day, not I just want you to know at all, but, respect. Yeah, still. But that was, you know, that, that for me was everything I loved. I loved, I loved doing something where every day you don't know how it's going to end, and if you don't pick the right people in the right way, you're not going to make it. Like, those, those, that's the, that's the environment where it, it imposes the most honesty on you and you're a better version of yourself. So I said this earlier, chase, pace, and pull. Like, you got to be around people that you're trying to make better than you mm-hmm. because if you don't, you're going to be doing this thing for longer than you want to or longer than you're good at it. And the thing deserves more than that. And I've always had this, I always feel like all great leaders want to get forgotten. They want to create something that eclipses them. And, and I think God's 
really gentle because if you do it that way, a lot of times you just become unforgettable. Like John Wooden was trying to get forgotten for like the last 50 years of his life. But every year, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar would come up and I'd hey, coach, we got to go. And I know y'all know Roger Staubach. I've known Roger Staubach. Oh, years. man. He, dude. I tell, and, and Academy guy. Yeah, and, he, and he's just – I tell people, like, don't meet your heroes. Unless that name is not only synonymous with the Cowboys, but for football. But, 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 and he's just that kind of human being. And I've watched Roger try to get forgotten for the last 40 years, and that ain't going to happen. And, and, and so I think one of the things I love about our community is the, the, the mission's b- bigger than any of us, and the next are more important than any of us. And we do it that way, we're going to produce a generation um, that does for us what we did for the ones before us or try to do for the ones before us. And, but that self-perpetuating meritocracy is an important deal. And that's the environment I've always – it's not that I've felt the most comfortable in it. It's just where I know I've needed the most because, frankly, it's an uncomfortable – it's an uncomfortable community because, but that's, that's, that's what we should do with our time. You have to be in it to sustain it. Yeah. Did you end up graduating the same buzz class you started? Yeah. So yeah. 217? Yeah. 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 Well, real, good for you, man. It was real fortunate. I was real. <laughs> Way to go. Well, let me tell you what. I'll tell you another funny That's story. kind of a weak ass story. Uh, Those of us who are truly hard stick what, around old, for a little old, bit. You know old, what I'm saying? Old, old, uh, tread and water was a bit of a challenge for I was going to ask you what got you first phase. What got you? <clears throat> well, the running. In the, I mean, right I in the beginning, they told me day one. They're like, "Hey, bro, man. I was third phase goon squad." A B C. I started. This started me and Charlie. <laughs> That's, all I know is first phase instructor Ryback goes, "Mr. Bruce, you're the goon." Casey freaking Ryback. Casey Ryback. Casey. Casey we Ryback. actually have a seal named Casey Ryback, and he's a badass. Yeah, yeah. He was the one who beat my ass he's, too. He's PTR. That's right. He, That's where I got like, it. He's like, "You're the goon," so it doesn't matter where you finish. Where you are. Everybody gets. That's what they said to me too. He said exact same thing to me. And matter of fact, conditioning runs. I'd be like, "Hey, do not be behind this dude right here." Exactly. Okay, so you're the officer of the goon squad. I'm the LPO. Oh yeah. And then my deal is, if I was feeling froggy every once in a while, I'd It'd get I'd, good to you. I'd, I'd no, I'd sprint and just goon the whole class. Like, That's what I'm talking about. It get good to you. Cause the, yeah, because the goon, because guys like us are good at goon stuff. They pick up that log and, and beat your ass. Like, yeah, wet sand. Like, I've been watching like Commando all day doing that. Life. I've been Damn. waiting for this, right? So we're good at the goon stuff. I it's told her about that stuff. moment the other day. I wanted to repeat it. So, a commando moment with the log and the chainsaw? Yeah, 100%. 100%. I think we should do our conditioning runs and buds like that. Uh, we should. Oh, we my should. gosh. <laughs> so, to, yeah, so so m- m- we're very fortunate. Had great classmates, made it all the way through. Are you going to the water? Yeah. yeah. That was your skill set? Well, one, I just... I'll, Float? Well, no, I, I've always been... <laughs> yes. Actually, I sink a lot. That's what, really? that, oh. what helped me a lot. Oh, I, okay, Jack. Man, like, I just... I mean, you go, you like when they throw you in the water, you're freaking gone. Go right down on the bottom. So I didn't have to exhale or anything during drown proof, but I just go down and just chill and then bounce back up (laughs) and stuff. Well, how'd you do doing drown proofing? I I was just not always been comfortable in the water. So for me, it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. Because some of those guys who, actually the guys who sink are pretty good. We're good at drown proofing. That's great. Yeah. It's the, it's the The ones in the middle. It's the survival swim. That's where it's harder, right? That kick your ass? Yeah, it was tough. And then all I know is we tread water in pool comp. And I told the story the other day, and I saw him the other day. So Tom Chavy was yeah. second phase O. And I passed everything first time, every time during dive phase, pool comp. Do they push that pretty hard on you because of being an officer? Naval Academy officer? Like, hey, you guys got you to be. I, I think we push it on ourselves, and there's an expectation of it from yeah. the community, for sure, and certainly from the Naval Academy. Man, Roger that. And are I, they watching? Like, do they follow the Naval Academy? Are they a lot of the grads or? that are already in the teams will circle and see who's. Hey, are you oh, they do do that. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, check. Got, I didn't know y'all did that. Yeah, I mean, we did that. I didn't know we did that. I can say that now, right? We do that. We, we try do that. To right. our own and make sure you know the, the, preserve the brand. For the confusion right? of Marcus saying that he's a part of this, he's now. a graduate. He got 2023. 2023. In the books, honor- baby. Honorary Naval Academy graduate. Classmate. And That's he's important too. Very excited about I it. I love it. I'm so proud of him for that. And he, and even uh, he's an honorary graduate, and he has a higher GPA than I do. <laughs> hey, check this out. You know, so I'm the LPO, and then I was in there with um, Slab. Oh yeah. Yes. So you got a Medal of Honor, Master Chief, and then you, now they have their LPO. Slab just stares into your soul. He does. He can so touch he, it. He was he was up at the office the other day, and I felt like that scene in Goonies. Where Chunk just starts confessing stuff, and then one time at the theater, yeah, when he walks in, uh, th- and, a, uh, bro, uh, and I just started confessing the stuff because Slab is just staring at me. It's like there's one time I took a dollar out of the plate, and I just I put four quarters in. I was just trying to make change, and and uh, God, that's true. So, but I, you'll love this story. So treading water with the twin eighties was hard for me because I couldn't exactly oh, save my that life. That kicked right? my ass. 
And all I know is <laughs> I, I'm going for the last time, third time. And everyone's kind of giggling a little bit. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And I look up and Chavy is on a high dive and he's hung a sandwich on a fishing pole mm. off the high dive right above my head. He's like, Mr. Bruce, maybe <laughs> this will keep you up. And I inhaled a third of that pool, yeah. shot right to the bottom. Oh, the instructors came gosh. down and got me and finally passed that last one. That's the thing. Like, if you can separate yourself from the pain, Bud's is the funniest thing you've ever seen. It is. So pure I think trauma. all the guys who were Bud's instructors are their yeah. own class of frogman. Yeah. I, I think that that's like going back to a university. Yeah. That it may seem like it sucks in the beginning, but when you get out of it, or guys, when they're in it, they appreciate it. Yeah. Like, if you're that single dude, <sighs> just visiting them. I laugh uncontrollably. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it, it would probably be if I, especially if I was going to school. Oh, and we we produce some of the greatest smart asses on the smart planet. asses. I mean, if you if you need some material, you go there. Well, especially as an officer who's not very smart. Like I, I fully realize how how smart ass my guys were. Like when I'm driving home, I'm like, wait a minute, he was making fun of me. <laughs> that wasn't a compliment at all. Like what? Was like like a, a, fully a year later, I'm like, Dad, come at Rin. You know, like, you know yeah. I just put it together that he's making the same way with Slab. Time. When you sit next to him, I remember after Afghanistan when I wound up in Ramadi. Yeah, he, he was also out there, and they sent me to him. He's like my psychiatrist. I just sit there on the couch, and be like, so this is what happened. You know, I like ice cream and ice cream. You know, <laughs> and blah blah. And it just kept going on. And I mean, best dude, amazing. And then you got some guy completely opposite of that. Well, they'll bring the other side of you. I mean, it's just. I, that, and that's yeah. I mean, it's in, in uh, yeah. It, it was it was great memories, especially as you get further away from it. And then uh, love my time in the teams, man. I, I didn't do as much as most, but I've been around legendary guys that, like you and your bro and all these other guys. Like you know, if you, if you count yourself, hey, let me tell you something. All those you count yourself wealthy by the company you keep. I'm one of the wealthy. All those people. names that you mentioned, yeah. all those guys. I remember sitting in the room. I, I also got a chance to be in a room with them. Yeah, and and thinking um, like I was supposed to maybe fetching coffee or something. When yeah. when you were always thinking that in room for like, yeah, I it never dawned on me that I was good enough to be in there, and I was because I was yeah, in there. Because if you're not, they won't let you in. But that's what keeps you honest. What keeps you honest is knowing you got to earn it that day. But it does that that feeling is still there, and that's kind of what that's a cool thing. I, did, but I, also I never think that's about why y'all keep doing this is yeah. because we got to earn it every day. And, and one of the things I tell people all the time is like. When you lose people you love sooner than you should, the worst thing you can ever do is waste the time you have that they don't. Mm -hmm. And so I think all of us have a tremendous intensity to steward our time as well as we know how to with the time that we have now. And that, that's why y'all do what y'all do now. That's what well, I'm doing what I'm doing right now. And, and you know, one of the questions, I know you get asked this all the time, Morg does, and all, hey, what's your favorite gun? And I always slow down and I'll go, hey, are you asking me what my favorite gun is or what my favorite weapon is? And the younger guys are kind of sit back and like, well, it's the same thing. I'm like, no, a gun is a tool. A weapon is what I use to win. Yeah, I'm not like my favorite weapon is a map. Because if I have a map, I have everything. I know the bag I would be. I know what to come in, what, what to bring, what to leave, how to get home. And if we have a map, the worst we'll ever be is wrong, but we won't be lost. Mm -hmm. And wrong and lost are different. They are different animals. I've been both. I've been wrong and I've been lost. I'm an officer, land nav. Yeah, we, get just, we, just, we get lost. That's what happens, right? It's all right. It, but for me, like, if you're, if you're lost, any move could be wrong. It's terrifying. But if you're wrong, it's just a matter of realizing it. Remember where you said you want to go. Availing yourself to the wisdom of those who are where you say you want to go, who have been there, and the camaraderie of those who want to get there as badly as you do. And then you just got to do the, do the work. And, and kind of for me, I kind of, you know, getting out was hard. And, 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 and finally, I had this moment. I was like, man, um, when I look at the world through the lens of maps, it makes more sense to me. Like, I kind of define my life as having been lived on four maps. Literally, the ball field, the battlefield, the boardroom, and the breakfast table. And so the ball field describes my season life as an athlete. But now it's, hey, how do I take care of myself mentally and physically? It's, it's the map I use to guide and govern this mission to take care of myself mentally and physically so I can perform at a high level, right? The battlefield describes our seasonal life as members of the military and the SEAL community. But now it's, how do I protect those who have been entrusted to me morally, mentally, spiritually, and physically? The boardroom is how do I provide for those who have been entrusted to me? And the breakfast table is how do I build a family that loves me and that matters to others? And for me, all of life is about taking what I learned on the ball field and the battlefield and, and building a boardroom that allows me to be at the breakfast table who I said I'd be when I told Amy I do, right? And, and that's how I don't feel lost these days is, hey, w w my job is to put X's on the map worth going to. 
make sure I'm going to these high hard X's that scare me a little bit with the right people. Get as many people to high hard X's as, as, as are willing to do the work and use my time, right? And, and to do it in such a way that I've, 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 I've stewarded the wisdom that's been made available to me to those coming behind me. So not that they can get to the X I went to, they can pick a higher and harder one because I already broke trail. All right, that's, that's our nature is to break trail not so you can get to where I was, but you can get beyond where I was, right? And, well, they teach us not even to walk on the path. Right. Period. That's right. We, that's it. And we get nervous when we're on the path, or we're cheating. You know, we're, 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 there are some things that are down here that are designed a little bit differently. Yeah. And I mean, we're, we obviously fall into that classification. Yeah. So when you see, like, we just visited y'all's other friend. I'm not going to say his last name because he's still in. Um, the other Clint. Oh, yeah. The real uh, one? The, <laughs> the, the, the one if you were casting. Hey, we were, we, hey, we were dive buddies. Dude, if you are casting Beowulf, that's him. You just pick him. So we just visited the other Clint. It looks like. Uh, at the Bud's compound. It's like Beowulf. Dude, that's a. Uh, and he was telling us he's in charge yeah. of buds now yeah. and he was telling us that uh recruitment is at or enlistment i guess is at an all-time low mm. so what it looks like bullseye yeah <laughs> off a of 13th warrior that's it thank you 100 percent. that's him okay. he just needs an irish wolf so <laughs> what do you say to the young men that are you know have thought about going into buds but then they chicken out or whatever it is or they say oh because of this administration or whatever the the yeah. reasoning yeah. being um what do you say to encourage them to go to, to I, I, try I, listen you will mourn the hard years that you missed as you get older <clears throat> as you get older you will mourn the hard years that you oh missed. you can't do them mm-hmm. can't do them you, you will mourn the hardest things you miss doing and, and you know i tell these young men around me i was like adventure to your 20s Find during your 30s, grow during your 40s, give during your 50s, then do it all again in faster loops once you hit 60. But your adventures are for doing the hard stuff, right? And, and, and you know, I, I, I was telling my daughters today, I was like, you learn about kind of the world and academics uh, in your youth and in your teens, and then you learn about you in your 20s. Mm-hmm. And so where are you going to, what's going to teach you the most about you in your 20s? Easy things or hard things. Hard things are always going to teach you more about yourself because you can't lie. That's that's what I love about football and all these other things. These games tell us the truth. Hard things tell you the truth. And the more talented you are, the more will, the more the world will tell you anything you want to hear. So you got to be even more intentional about surrounding yourself with truth tellers, right? Because the the world seeks ease and comfort and hey, do this and you know. It, but so you got to be around. You got to deliberately be around people that tell you the truth, especially when you don't want to hear it. And and I said this earlier, easy now, hard later, hard now, easy later. Mm-hmm. Right? There's a lot of questions that you and you and me don't have about ourselves because we asked them in our 20s and we answered them. And, and, and we learn from others who are asking themselves the same questions a couple years ahead of us and answering us like, okay, how do we, but I mean, let me tell you what, you're going to mourn the hard years that you missed when you're young if you don't choose the hard things now. Yeah. Yeah, when you get on road test it, it's like, oh, find out what you're not. Or what you are, or if whatever that person said is right or wrong. Well, finding out what you're not is, that's what I love. Like, that's the best part. You're not. It was like, hey, I'm not this. You know, I, I talk about this thing called the, the achieving average. And, and one of the things I say is, like, I'm not a, I'm not a gifted person. Like, if you if you were to aggregate all my gifts and abilities, you'd find me to be a high C or low B in just about everything except for looks. I'm a good-looking guy. Like, it is, <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, I... I was walking out of the house this morning and I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror and I turned to look at Amy and I said, babe, I can turn it down, but I can't turn it off. It just is what it is. And that is what it is. And she laughed and went back to sleep, which is kind of hurtful. But, um, <laughs> but my gift is not being gifted. And so I, the way I've always seen it is the mountain makes all men and women average if you're aiming high enough. And if you don't start these hard things with angles and allies and advantages, you're not going to make it. And if you can make it, you shouldn't have gone there in the first place. Like, so angles are ref- constantly refining our craft. Allies are running with people who mean what they say as much as we mean. And advantages are understanding what you're good at, using those, and then finding out who's good at what you're not that you need and getting out of their way so they can do it. Yeah. And so it's pretty simple, but only hard things are going to impose that on you, right? You know, and I, I, don't, I don't know many people that have done hard things that mourn the hard things as they get older. But I know a lot of people that wish they would have done harder things when they were younger. It's all hard. That's that word itself. It's like, oh, it's hard. It takes. No, yeah. no, no. It's just a thing. Yeah. It's like when you go into it, that's how you know you're in it. Yeah. It's just part of it. 
So you're a Naval Academy grad. Or barely. Yeah. Naval. Yeah, real Navy. proud. I got your scores right here, Wait, man. It's Navy it. football. I thought at a 4.0 until they told me I had to buy about semesters. I was like, oh, <laughs> am I eligible? <laughs> Navy football, then a SEAL, mm-hmm. NFL. What? Tell us about what you do now. Man, so what I love doing now is building and leading companies, allow veterans and athletes to transition more effectively. From the ball field, the battlefield, look at the boardroom as a place that you use to build a breakfast table that you're proud of. Mm-hmm. And so for me, you know, building a small portfolio of companies, allow guys to come off the ball field and the battlefield more effectively using what they already know how to do, to be around people who know more about the map they're on now than they do. So for me, I mean, the business plan is real simple. It's Psalm 127, 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, Galatians 6, 9, Proverbs 22, 29, Proverbs 27, 2. And so Psalm 127, unless the Lord builds a house, the laborers work in vain. So I asked God into it very quickly at the beginning. 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, do not put on airs. God will promote you in his due time. He's very careful for you. So who are you going to let write your book? You are the creator of all the things, right? Galatians 6, 9, do not go where you're doing is right. And a time you're harvesting a benefit, is got to do work. You know, it's the chopping wood verse. Proverbs 22, 29, you see a man excellent in his work. And I speak for small men, I speak for kings. What are you good at? And, and, and what leader needs that so you can earn the right to learn from that leader? And then Proverbs 27, 2, is let no one boast for himself, a stranger's lips and not his own. So my idea is like, ask God into it, don't sweat it, do work, be excellent, shut up. Like and it. repeat. And so a, a small, you know, what I love doing is like, hey, when you come off the ball field and the battlefield at the places we've been fortunate enough to be at, you are a subject matter expert at really four things, helping leaders protect, perform, compete, and recover. So, you know, global security, leadership, team development, human performance are those three companies that we kind of build. And, and, and ultimately what I'm trying, what I love doing is building companies and then guys plug into it as they leave the ball field and the battlefield. And if I've done my job in 22 months or less, they've met someone they didn't know and discovered something they didn't know how to do. And they look at the boardroom the way they, they should look at the boardroom. Like veterans and athletes should look at the boardroom the way that we look at a gear locker. Hey, this is just a place that kid up yeah. to be at the breakfast table Sand where it's supposed to be. That's it. So what for me, you- I, look at, I, look at, I look at industries as terrains, and I look at companies as weapons that perform on that terrain. The humans, too. That's it. The and human assets are weapons. That breakfast table is, is the math that matters most. Yeah. And, and if you have tremendous success at the boardroom at the expense of the breakfast table, I don't want to learn from you. I, I can find someone that has success at the boardroom and the breakfast table at the same time. And if you have success at the boardroom, but you ravaged yourself mentally and physically doing that, and you can't physically or mentally enjoy them. So for me, it's like, hey, all these maps, for, for me, the way the maps work in my mind is that breakfast table is the, is the Google map that you open up, and the ball field, the battlefield, and the boardroom are layers that you toggle on top of it as you build this thing called your life. And you want to look back on your life with a bunch of X's, that have been high and hard to get to. And you want to look at the next one and go, well, that's hard. Who will go with me there, too? And when you do it that way, you don't. You got a lot of scars, but not many regrets. So, well, you got your mind, body, and spirit lining that up. I mean, it's only, you, you're, look, your mind and your spirit be like, hey, you can do it. That's right. You can freaking do it. And then you go out and go out and you road test it, and yeah. something goes wrong. You're like, what happened? Well, your body has to practice as well. And then your spirit has to be behind your mind, your, with your body. It's like, oh, you know how to do this? I'm like, yeah, I know how to do this. It and is. then the confidence comes when those marry up. When they sink. When, when they, they sink. sink. And as soon as they do, then you can drive that sucker in any direction you want. Because I was thinking about this. I was like, hey, man, when did you realize you were a team guy? I mean, like, when that confidence sets in, like, when you walk in. And what I mean by that is, like, yeah. you you would have guys that, like, you, you just know how to be a team guy. Like, there's a point, and I don't remember what it is. When but you start getting asked questions by the guys you respect, respect right. that's when you know, like, oh, man. I've, like, there's a point in time I've, when it sets in, like, hey, I'm, I'm a freaking SEAL. Yeah. And the Trident, sure, I remember all that, but that's not what I'm talking that's about. Cer- that's ceremonial. That's ceremonial. That's ceremonial. Yeah. I'm talking about, like, when I was walking around, it's, it's the same time you, when you walk into public now, you're not afraid of a man. Yeah. I don't remember when that was, but I know it's a thing. Yeah. Somebody pointed out to me that day. I was like, yeah, I never thought about it. But yeah. I remember being afraid of, of men, and then there was a point They're where not. I w- wasn't. Yeah. It, th- those those happen randomly through our time in training. They're gifts. Yeah. They're gifts they're, that you can't freaking talk about, and we don't earned. ever talk about. Yeah. And if you pointed them out, like if that was actually in the brochure, be like, hey, just by doing this, it's going to sound weird. But you get this. <laughs> well, I love what you just said. Like I tell my daughters all the time, like the human, the human machine has four systems. You have the body, the brain, the mind, and the soul. 
And for an analogy's sake, the body's a car, the brain is a steering wheel, the mind is a driver, and the soul is this inherent sense of where you want to be. And the body and the brain are just machines. That's but, it. But they abide by some rules. Rules, they got and rules. You, and you better know what their rules are. Yeah, they got are. rules. Like, they, they do have rules. You know, like, hey, there are, I don't like the word limitless because it's not true. There are limits. They're not what you thought they were. Well, one but, of my favorite things, because I want to get into some of the things that you have accomplished, some yeah. of the businesses that you have helped start, is carry the load. Yeah. That is one of the coolest things. It's special. I think you've had a part in yeah i mean then that i think america does can you it's yeah i mean carry the load for me um so I'll, i said this earlier before we turn the mics on i think where i said hey there's i think i feel like there's a difference between being here and being home here's geography home is knowing why you're here coming home is hard that's why i love and i'll, I'll embarrass you because we're doing this right now but i'll i'll say it to everybody i tell people all the time it's like we brought marcus here you brought him home with this audacious courageous love that I think sometimes only women have the capacity for like your mom I mean it's just women are uniquely courageous on certain things and, and so for me I remember very vividly being up at the office and just knowing that I was here but I wasn't home and I had a wife and I had girls and I had employees and teammates and friends that needed a guy who was home not just here and up at our office we have this shoot house semi this shoot house and I remember going like man if here's where I'm and home is on the other side of that door, how do I get through that door? Like C4. C4 is amazing. You can cook with it, you can blow stuff up with it, it's great. But for me, C4 became an acrostic and what it stood for is career, compete, contribute, have a catalyst. What I realized is until my early 30s, my career was being on the ball field, being on, my career was competing, contributing, and getting better. And, and so for me, I sliced those things up. I'm like, okay. And I have about two years of a daily checklist is this career, compete, contribute, catalyst. Hey, did I go to work? Because I can't have a good day unless I go. Compete, did I compete in something or train to compete in something? Did I help someone that can't help me? And did I get better? And it's just one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. And carry load came about because I was like, all right, how do I serve now? How do I, how, how do I, how do I take care? How do I make sure? It was, it was, so I started doing my own Memorial Day, probably 2007, 2006, 2007. And I'll just put on a pack and go. And I, I tell the story all the time. I was at a party with some great friends. They'd never served their citizens. Citizens is a, citizens for me is complimentary. Civilians is neutral, right? The citizens, they're great Americans, doing everything they could within their sphere of influence, right? And I just was not doing well. And Amy, you know, sweet little Amy comes up to me. And I have this beard and all this other stuff. And Amy's like, you're scaring everybody. I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> and she showed me a picture. You know what the hell you're talking and about. And I was like, and I had my arms crossed and tattooed. I was like, yeah, yeah. maybe a little bit. And she pulled me around the corner and she put her hands on my shoulders. She goes, listen, I love you and I miss them too. She was talking about all the guys that we lost. And she goes, um, but I've never seen you not do something about the things you disagree with. So do something or get over it. And so I went home and I put on a pack and I just started going out. And, and for about four years, I would just put on a pack and I would go until I couldn't go anymore. And you would walk. call Amy and she'd come mm -hmm. pick me up. And I had some great American friends that were like, hey, how do, one, I want to tell you, my uncle that I lost in Vietnam, my grandpa that I lost in World War II and Korea, and all these other people are like, man, how do we use what you're doing to tell you the story about the people we love and miss? I'm like, well, let's just walk together. And I'm going to ask you who you're carrying, and you'll tell me. And you ask me who I'm carrying, and I'll tell you. And the only wrong answer is nothing to no one. And what this turned into is this really amazing thing that – I mean, we started in 2010, 2011, mm -hmm. and now it's, I mean, it's huge. It's huge. Every year and every May, we step off from the center of West Point, Seattle, and Chicago, and Minot, and in, in this amazing school called Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College launches these kids out, and they run this relay, and a guy named Bill Driscoll, who's a madman, an absolute mad scientist, ran the, the Coca-Cola relays for the Olympics, poured his heart and soul into this, and, and the neatest thing, you know, I, I remember one time, Megan Valentine, yeah, Tommy's daughter and I was carrying her and I was carrying Maddie because they'd come down to the Dallas event and Megan and Maddie ran off somewhere and and uh my daughter said dad are you sad and I'm like yeah I'm sad uh, but I'm sad because I'm, I could be sad because I miss my friends or I could be sad because I never do such men choose your sad mm -hmm. I'd rather be sad because I miss friends than I've never known someone like no, I, I heard it said the other day man that especially with us 
the, the, the expression, like we're doing time in here. Yeah. We got life. Yeah. We all got the death penalty. Yeah. Right. So what a team guy, what do me and you deserve to get put down in here? Right. Yeah. Cause we're different. So when guys check out, it's like when you, when you guys get out of prison, you think the guys in prison are upset about it? Probably a little bit in our own yeah. way. Yeah. Right? right, but the guys who die in combat and they get to go back out, it's like, oh, good to yeah. go, I man. Fucking guys, of course you did, right? Yeah, like with Tommy and all. That. I mean, just uh, here's the thing that happened to us is how much death we've seen at an early age. Mm -hmm. Like most people, when they get in their yeah. late late time, all yeah. their friends die. That's why grandparents act the way they do. Yeah, and then there's there's those short bursts of time when they're with you. They're always you know it's a happy time, everything mm -hmm. like that. It's like that just kept accumulating on us. Like the amount of deaths. So now when we see each other, especially our the G Watts. Yeah. I mean, well, the Vietnam guys had it bad too. And then the storms and the shields were so violent that right. their war lasted 39 minutes. Right. Because the right. Vietnam dudes are so pissed off. Right. And then we got what we happened to us. Yeah. And then now that we're all out, it's it's each guy's trying to find their pace kind of Yeah, deal. and I think we gotta find ways to to, to we gotta find an enemy. And we got to use our time. Something, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. So something what's, to do. What's my enemy? Hey, my enemy are the reasons people are afraid. My enemy are the reasons that guys think they can't have a life beyond the military, life beyond it the It could be an education. Life. It doesn't matter. Yeah, college. That's yeah. my enemy. I can't, I, I'm scared of it. I need to beat it. But the surfer only cares about the wave. It doesn't have to be the wave. You're always in search of the wave. But it, any wave will do. See, I feel like the good team guy life, too, though. The yeah. surfing, board shorts, and Hawaiian oh, yeah. shirt. Yeah, I mean, work hard, play hard. And, yeah. And, the, the one thing that I, I'm really proud of the guys we know is when you lose so many people so quickly, it can make you casual and too aggressive with this fear of missing out. You only live once kind of thing. And I think what's happened now is we've started to steward the fact that we're still here. Are right, you backing it up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, we are still I don't know here. when that started to happen, but it did. Whether, whether we should be or not, we can't ask that question anymore. We are. What are we going to do with our time? We're going to use our time to make it. To, to, to make sure people, because for me, the calculus with Carrie Love is this. My friend thought you were worth dying for and they didn't even know you. And when you don't miss them on the one day you're supposed to, Memorial Day, it makes them dying for you not make sense to me and I needed it to make sense to me. And the magic of Carrie Love is this. Pro, to this day, probably seven out of every 10 participants of Carrie Love is great American citizens and their yeah. families. I have friends that don't have anybody. That's it. In the military, that they like, there's no family members or friends or anything, but they love the mission, and they show up. And at what the they have to know, every year. what they have to know is that I tell I tell angry dudes all the time. It's like, listen, you can be mad about a lot of things, but you can't be mad because you think no one cares you lost your friend. Because that 60 year old hedge fund manager who never met your friend has been humping with it. 45 pound hey, he's pissed on. off about it yeah yeah, yeah. So he, 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 and, he, and he's here because he wants you to know that your friend mattered to him even though they didn't know yeah. him and I've done this and he walks and he's like show me your hands I'll give guys hey walk with this name mm -hmm. there's executives that have never served me like I want to do something like walk with this name and three in the morning I'll go go look at his hand and he'll open up his hand and, and, his, and he's like that's my friend mm -hmm. you're carrying my friend and all of a sudden he can't pretend that he, no one cares that he lost his friend anymore and so that log is off the fire yeah. We're going to find something to be angry about. That's our nature. Anger can be our fuel. Mm. But let's just be angry about the right stuff and not yeah. the wrong stuff. And America is not apathetic. I mean, America cares. And that is the thing that happens every year with carry load is you can't, you can't, you can't be a veteran that comes to carry load and think that nobody cares and lost your friend. Can't so are there events like everywhere or is it mainly in it's, Dallas? No, it's huge. That's I mean, what I thought. That, yeah. yeah. The whole month of May, God, I forgot how many. I mean, Stephen Holly, you know, hmm. that's what a Naval Academy grad is supposed to look like. <laughs> you know, like just, uh, uh, yeah, that's him right yeah, there. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's, that's that dude the, right you know, there. Like, if we did a calendar, he'd be January, yeah. I'd be February, March, and April. All, all of them, right? It's and a layout. Those are it's called layouts. layouts. It's, like a, it's like an accordion, the yeah, accordion yeah. one. That's and so uh, funny. Uh, But Stephen does an amazing job with it now, Debbie. Uh, but, I mean, there's probably 35, 40 events over the course of, and those and those relays are coming across the entire United States the whole time. You're gonna link it up, yeah. One day, it's amazing. It's it, it's the coolest thing, and 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 you just run into dudes, you know, like and, and you'll be in the middle of nowhere, and like groups like Team RWB will come out of the woods. They're like, yeah, we're gonna walk with you the next five miles, and and so you'll just walk along some side of the road, and some farmer will come up, like, what are you doing? Your car break down? I'm like, no, sir, I'm walking to Dallas for this thing called Carry Load, and 
he'll park his truck and walk next to you and tell you about Vietnam and Korea. And oh you're my just, gosh! And yeah. it's the first time he's and you just you're just blown away by it. And um, you know, for me, carry the load restored my faith in uh, America. Yeah. Because it wasn't what we see on the news and here on the radio. It was the mom getting her. There's a there's a there's a place in I think it's Laverne, Tennessee. And if you rob banks. Go there when Carrie Load comes through because <laughs> the whole town comes. Everybody's there. Kids get out of school. Oh, wow. And it's the neatest thing really? ever, right? Yes, it's incredible. That's the best thing about small towns. They'll do yeah. stuff like yeah. that. It's incredible, right? I think Carrie the Load and Wreaths Across America are two events that really bring, uh, like, just Americans and um, military. Send out freaking like together it's like service. it's service it's not talk. and it's showing that you care yeah, and it, you action. don't you don't have to be um a family member or a veteran no. you just no. have to care yeah and that's i love service projects like that that are nationwide i remember we were coming up with carry load and we were like hey we're gonna we're gonna go for 20 hours and 11 minutes because that was year was and Steven's like, we're going to run. For, I was like, we're not running. He's like, what are you talking about? I said, listen. Run? Why would said, you even say such a thing? I said, people can't run and talk. You can run and talk. I can't run and talk. <laughs> so we'll be walking. Have you ever talking. tried it? It's like it's, cadence. It's the guys have seen cadence, a gift, man. You got to. Yeah, you got to be built for mm. that. I think you're genetically predisposed yeah, to Yeah, you're cadence. wired for that, man. Yeah, because it's not like. One of the neat things that Marcus and I have gotten to see, like traveling with his speaking, and I know you have too, just when you travel to all these yeah. different towns, is seeing how different towns like Laverne, yeah. uh, Tennessee, or whatever that was, like when we went to um, Pepperdine during oh, the flags. Uh, in September for 9/11. Oh wow! They Pepperdine puts these huge American flags staked like in the, the university. Ground. Like, yeah. Yes, really. The university. That's you can barely even see the yard. All it's over the them. campus, in the or like on this hill that's overlooking the ocean. And there's a flag for everyone who died wow. in 9-11. Mm. Um, and it's a beautiful sight. It's magical and gives you the tingles. That whole place is amazing. Um, yeah. It's gorgeous. Every little town's got something. They all have I, I, something. I, here, I think every town has something. That's what I'm saying. Every the, little the, town the, the has little something. The little town, you can see it faster. Yeah. yeah. The big towns, you got to find it. Right? And, it it know, shows up on certain days. That's right. Like, it'll be a ghost town, but hey, you see this but stuff, every, this place. Everybody wants to be the best version of themselves possible. And the best version of themselves is someone who cares more about others than themselves. Mm -hmm. One of the, I want to just mention one other um, place is in Hawaii on Pearl Harbor. Oh, wow. Our um, mutual friend, Walter, yeah. his, his wife sent me these pictures this year and they had combat boots with really? pictures and names of everyone that died post 9-11 oh wow in um in afghanistan iraq wars boots just spread all over the That's um, airway of pearl harbor That's it was really cool in a this year a full rainbow was hanging over the boots it man. was a really cool sight man and the other thing for me is like i'm i'm not i mean i by and far the ones that get most excited not i, well, I shouldn't say that a demographic that gets really excited about carrie load that comes out are these young people young young people that I mean i you know one thing steve and i talked about is uh, I want I want my kids to not remember when Memorial Day wasn't. That's done fun to be well. a part of something. Yeah. yeah, they don't remember Memorial Day not being done well. Yeah, they, remember, don't, they don't remember the mattress sales and the car sales. All they know is this Memorial Day, mm -hmm. and so you know we've got this generation of kids that know what it took to protect this life that they have, and it's influencing their decisions now. Mm -hmm. Like you know, young stud over here, mm -hmm. this, I watch these young men and women choose the harder thing, which ultimately I think will go back and benefit these communities that require hard men and women to do the hardest stuff possible. Yeah. Like that's a cool thing about Annapolis, man, is every year I see 10 times as many applicants as will get accepted to the service academies. And I'm like, okay, we still have great kids that want to do the harder thing. Yeah. Right? And, 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 you know, and because we need them, I mean, this, this whole American proposition is not a free thing. And there There's are people that want to take it out. Very special feeling when you walk onto the campus mm -hmm. of one of the service academies. I've only been to the Naval Academy. I agree. I've been to all, all of them. Right. But He's the warmest of the ones. <laughs> there is no other service academy besides Naval Academy. Let's put that out right now. Um, but 
Go Navy, beat Army. That's right. It is very special. Matter of fact, we're exactly 3,000 <laughs> from the Go Navy, beat Army bleachers. It's very, very special. Um, do you want to mention any of the other businesses you've had a part in? I, I mean, I mean, TRG is the the TRG.com is just a global security company. Hold fast is I get a partner with TNQ on that and do a lot of the keynote speaking and stuff, which is amazing. And then, and then Windage is W I N D I J is like this. Um, the, the reason for the name is you win more when you have an indigenous guy. Uh, like we never do anything without a local taking us into something. And so I, I look at this exiting demographic of special operations warrior and all these guys are, and the ladies are ex extraordinary tactical athletes. So how do you take that tactical athleticism into the human performance world in college sports and professional sports and NFL, NCAA, these athletic programs, <clears throat> they have amazing opportunities for veterans and veteran family members to plug in and learn from the amazing strength coaches. And so it's like, for me, I always go, hey, if we're gonna start a company, it has to fall into this protect, perform from the neck up, compete and recover, which is performance from the neck down. And those are the businesses we innovate into because that's where you're gonna be a, you know, if you wanna meet a CEO, meet a CEO by doing something that he or she needs. Mm -hmm. And then that CEO who knows this boardroom map better than you is gonna go like, hey, why don't you come over here? Mm -hmm. And and that's just like getting an IA, individual augmentee opportunity. Hey, work out hard at the gym, and that unit's going to like, hey, man, why don't you come over here with us? So for me, business, oh, yeah. is business bring to the board and what you already know how to do and get around the people who know more about you on this map than you do, mm -hmm. and then listen to them when they tell you, hey, you ought to do this. Yeah. I've got a buddy of mine. He owns the 16th biggest mortgage company in the United States. We were at breakfast one time, and I'm like, what does it take to be number one? It's a natural question all of us are going to ask. And he's eating his omelet. He goes, I don't know. I was like, what do you mean? I don't know. So I go, what about number two? He goes, I don't know. Not, so I'm getting disappointed now. I'm like, what about number five? <laughs> he's just eating his omelet. He goes, I don't know. I go, what about 10? What does it take to go from 16 to 10? And he puts his omelet down. And he looks at me. He goes, here's what I know. If I try to go from 16 to 15, I can't spend three months with my daughter on this island I just bought in Vermont every summer. And he started eating his omelet again. And I'm like... I that's like the it. dangerous man. The yeah. dangerous man is the man who knows how much enough is. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's war one on one. Don't outrun your supply chain. That's we know that, but yeah. we forget it when we come to the boardroom. Why? Why? Like we would never. If you look at coming from the battlefield of the boardroom as an invasion, we would never invade anything the way that we invade the private sector. From oh, I tell team guys that with anything. I was like, wait a minute. After I tested you with yeah. not only buds and being in yeah. the SEAL teams and two wars, and you get out and, you, and you're telling me what's kicking your ass? Yeah. Navy SEAL, what? Yeah, it's funny, it was like terrain fam, industry, yeah. weapons fam, company, you know. Uh, Team guys got to have that second guy with them. We're yeah. trained in twos, there's, there's always two of us, not just one of us, there's man. There's two things I do not Worst like. thing that happens when they separate us when we freaking man, get out, man. Sure. There's two things I don't like about the private sector. One, you stay in command for far too long. If you're doing command well, it taxes you at every level, right? And, and it's more sustainable. So you set up your command sector. like that then. That's right. So one, don't stay in command for longer than you should. And then two, there's no senior enlisted advisor. So you got to find it. You got to find that person that's ruthlessly married to the truth and is going to hurt your feelings to tell you the truth. And I, I, to this day, I, I, I miss my chiefs and my LPOs. And, and I've replicated that role within my companies because I know I need it. You know, it's like the strength. And that's the coach. worst part about making rank. And that's the best part about my job is mm -hmm. I never made it past the LPO. Those are skill sets. It's the best job. Best job I'm ever. Still doing the job. <laughs> that's for me, it's like the analogy, especially as an O, I tell people, it's like, being an officer in the special operations community, the SEAL teams is like being a college football player. You got five years to go, four years to compete. Kind of look at it. Being enlisted guy is like being a pro. As long as you do the job, Boom. you're doing the job, man. And so just know that. What's no, no. after the five years for an officer? You go, you go yeah, to the staff. You go to staff. You go to, you, know, you go to do a staff position. You just you, 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 you don't get to go. You have to send. Okay. Not not always, but often. And I remember they're like, hey, give, give us your gun and here's a laptop. I'm like, man, I don't type real well. Same way with, it's, it's <laughs> like with sports with the officers and the SEAL teams. is like they get to play on the field for a while and then they got to go into the in the back. We go and they get, front, we sell then they got to go do something else inside the game itself. Yeah. They're, not, they're still 
And we yeah, are they them. contributing to the field? Absolutely. Yeah, we need but amazing guys to do it. Like, listen, yeah. we need that's guys. the problem. Is we like good, the good like ones don't like doing. That's why Walt and all them guys are so such thank badasses. God. Stick, thank, thank God, God. we got guys like real. Clint he sticks and, around and does <laughs> and, and, and Walt what do you say? and Jellyfish. Real Clint. Real Clint. Yeah, real Clint. Yeah, real Clint. Yeah, those guys. Yeah, real Clint. We got Smart Clint. That's Emerson. Yeah, and then you got yeah, Big yeah, Clint, yeah. which is you know yeah. heavy Clint. And uh, uh, I'll tell you, have you met Roman Shea, Clint Roman Shea? Uh, he, I love Roman Shea. He's, he's one of my favorite. So I'll tell you a funny story about Roman Shea. So Roman Shea and I are in this thing together, and I'm sitting next to him, and I'm like, hey, uh, you, be, um, you be little Clint, I'll be big Clint. And he doesn't talk, right? So he looks at me, and he just kind of stares at me. He goes, I don't want to be little Clint. I was like, all right, you don't want to be a jerk about it, man. I was just having some ideas. Yeah. And he goes, he goes, I'll be uh, – I'll be compact Clint and you be heavy Clint. Oh right? my gosh. Well, this, is a little, <laughs> this is a little hurtful, bro. Yeah. But okay, right? That <laughs> and, uh, is so funny. But, but thank God we have guys like that and beef and these guys that stay in the community and, and serve beyond when it's just fun. And, yeah. And, okay, so uh, I'm, there's going to be a reunion. Yeah. I'm calling it the Great Reunion. Marcus I'll even tell you when it's going to happen. It's going to happen in 2028. I'm not going to tell you where it's going to happen because I'm going to keep that part classified for Very just well. seals. Understood. But I'm putting this in the open now. This is me in the clear of the LPO talking to all the guys under the Trident. That was pretty if awesome. you had a freaking Trident smashed into your chest by the United States of America under God. Yeah. Under God. Says that. Yeah. Your ass is going to show up for this. Now, we got the East and West Coast. That's fine. We got the mustard. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's going to be one time when we're all together. In the middle. In the, in the middle. middle. That's going to be fairly epic. It's going to be epic. You, and you got till 2028 to get ready for it. Don't worry. I'm going to get to you. I will get to you to let you know where it's at. I don't think we can go to Sturgis because Drago. <laughs> I got another place. All, okay. I got it all, I I got all picked say, out. I got all our guys handled. Yeah, I try to tell people it's like, It's actually listen. close to your hometown. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I'm I just, tell people, like, listen, when you can get persona non grata from Sturgis in 18 hours, <laughs> that tells you what kind of a war fight you can like Drago. Yeah. This is what people don't understand is like, there's something went down. I got one of my guys have done it. Oh, yeah. Period. And I, I smile with that. Yeah. Like, I'll hear something like that. That's a good one. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Well, for our regular listeners and not our team guys, what? how can they help you or find you? or? So my daughter's, so I've got an Instagram. Uh-huh. It's called Real Clint Bruce, uh-huh. I think. I'm 90% sure. Yes. You may check that young stud. Uh, and then that's probably the best way. Or LinkedIn. Yeah. Well, I understand LinkedIn. LinkedIn's like a social media that I kind of get. But that's probably the – look at Clint Bruce on LinkedIn or real Clint Bruce on Instagram and reach out. And if we can help you, uh, love, to, love to help you. And if you want to hire Clint as a speaker, you can reach out Go to, to Team, Never Quit. Team Never Quit speakers. Yes. Um We'd love booking awesome. you. Yeah, it's fun. I have so much fun. I have so much fun being a part of the brand and supporting what you guys do. And, and you know, you weren't in here, but I, I, I talk about y'all a lot when I talk. I, I talk about, like, do you want to be around people like this the rest of your life? And your answer is yes. You know, who are you chasing? Who are you keeping pace with? And who are you pulling behind you? And when you have that chase, pace, pull kind of battle rhythm, it tends to work out. And you have moments like this. You know, just driving down here this morning, Amy called me. She checked in on me. She goes, how happy are you right now? And she knew I was happy, one, because I was driving in the morning. Two, I was probably, she timed it up. She knew I was coming through the Sam Houston. So I just love driving through that. And three, I'm coming to see my friends. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, who gets to do that, right? And, and, and we do. Oh, I heard it said the other day, saying, hey, man, you don't have to do that. It's all you have to do. It's like what you get to do. Oh, I, like that. I like that. It's yeah. all yours, bro. I stole I like it, too. That. When he said it to me, I was like, oh, freaking. And I, I've said it a lot lately. Yeah. He also stole Blessed and Unstoppable. Oh, I use, I use Blessed hey, it's and Unstoppable. It's all yours. No, I tell people I got it from you. <laughs> hey, man, I, I stole it from somebody it. else. I, I, I stole that damn thing, I texted her. I was like, hey, what did he say real quick? She's like, Blessed and Unstoppable. I'm like, oh, I'm using that. It's a, When you hit somebody with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I mean, at first I was kind of hesitating. I'd bumble over it. But then I was like, I mean, I, I am. But I'm so blessed there and is a book, Blessed and Unstoppable, by Billy Allsbrook. That has That's right. He's one taught me that. Dr. Billy Allsbrook. Yes, and that dude fire you up. Mar- when Marcus wants to get fired up in the morning, he watches the Billy All for two weeks at Exos. When I'm doing YouTube. like the Denzel all right. speeches, yes. you watch it. I'm gonna watch it right yeah, now. you know, it's- Admiral. I say make your bed. You know, I start with all those. He's he's in that. Yeah, I'm gonna listen to it on the way back he, up. He puts together a collaboration of like all the guys. Really, it's I've really had a couple. Cool. Um, I was on a plane the other day, and the, and the lady she asked me how I was, and I sent that to her, and I was like, well, "How are you, ma'am?" She goes, "Well, I'm blessed and highly favored." I thought that was pretty smooth too. It doesn't. It doesn't have the punch that. No, I'll hit you hard. Yeah, man. When I say it, it's highly favored. Highly favored is a girl thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm not judging highly favored. 
No, 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 no. I'm, I get you. I'm just saying, unstoppable feels said. better when I say yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. Y'all it look stops like everybody when I say it. Like, uh-huh. yeah, that's pretty good. When I say I'm highly favored, people go, mm. yeah. <laughs> then they see him and the girls are like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. see me at like Costco by myself or a discount tire. Probably shop, pray for me. They're like, yeah, right. You, highly favored yeah. is not the first phrase that came to my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Son, we need to get yeah, you exactly. to church and we need to help you out. We need to change what the highly favored means. Just the way you look on the eye. Yeah. That's another thing I've been trying to tell the guys. It's like, hey, look, when you move back into your neighborhoods you look terrifying you, you look scary as shit and we tried to get like that and when we were then we were hammered into that i get that but you got to go out and talk to your neighbors and they'll know it's okay to be living around so, you this is a funny story so i dragged this tire around my neighborhood it's like this big old that's tire. the shit i'm talking and about I just, and so my my daughters were they were talking to some boys the other day and I'm like where do you live and and my daughter too is like we live over here and you know and then all of a sudden it comes out and these boys look at the go is your dad the tire guy? Oh my they gosh. Go, they go, There's this huge dude and he just drags his tire around the neighborhood and he doesn't talk to anybody. <laughs> and he's just his head down. And but but I'm wearing a headphones, headphone, yeah. so I can't tell that someone said and Amy's told me he's like, listen, when you go by this house, this house, this house, you take your headphones out. And if they say hi to you, you say hi back. And I'm like, I do what I want. Look, like, which houses or <laughs> I do what I want, but what I want is what you want for yeah. me. So yeah. can you tell me, remind me which houses they are? I'm, can I'm you not send saying, me pictures? I'm not of saying no. I'm just saying like I, I just I want to know which house it was, right? So, That's so funny. Yeah, because when you first get out, you can come at them kind of hard. I can remember the first time my kid had a uh, birthday party. All his buddies from school played paintball with him. Yeah. I kicked their ass. Oh. I made them suckers bleed, dude. They literally bled. Yeah, they wanted to play me by myself. I was like, come on. There's no neutral. There's, There's not. And then, I, then from there, I yeah. said, of course, you know, I get along with their parents. They yeah. all go to school together. So yeah. I want the kids to know, don't ever talk back to your parents. You're going right. to deal with Marcus. Oh, That's my gosh. Hey, listen. Thank you. Somebody I, had to play that I role. I will discipline your kid. Like, man, I'll let them know that you don't even have to worry about it. I'm just saying, as long as I'm alive and here with you, me, man. Send me. I, <laughs> Thank you. I will you. yell at other people's kids in a heart. Man, and just I'll like yell at mine. Burn, just like Bernie Mac. My Bernie kid's Mac got it so it. good, I yell at him just because. I, I have to make stuff up now. My kids are so good. Yeah. <laughs> Communal parent. I used to when I grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas, I get spanked six or seven times before I even got home. Yeah. <laughs> I pull home my mom and like, asleep. Your I was like, I know Mr. Anderson. I'm like, I already got it and all these other things. But yeah, the, the uh it's, it's just it's 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 funny to It's the best being a parent. That's that's the that's the Dude, best. I used to I used to people ask me how great I said, Man, you know, I, one of the hardest questions I ever get asked is who's your mentor? I'm like, it's impossible. I have so many of them. Why would I ever deny myself a mentor? I'd walk up to dudes at church. I'm like, hey, your daughter doesn't hate you. How do you do that? And my wife would be like, here's what he means. He's just, sorry. It's, That's I how like, I asked I you. Like, I was like, what's wrong with the like question? You got to be forward with it, right? Because it's not your question. It's just your mannerisms. You just chased a guy across the parking lot and asked him why his teenage daughter still holds his hand. I'm like, yeah, I want to know. She's like, I'm not. It's not. It's your approach. Oh my gosh! <laughs> You'd say, "Excuse me." Yeah. Hey, come here! Don't flirt with your daughter. <laughs> and they'll go, "Hey, your daughters don't hate you. How do you do that?" Oh I'm my like, gosh! And I was like, "What?" And she'd be like, "Can you?" Answer? She'd she'd be the. She's like, "What he means is he really respects the relationship you have with your teenage daughters." I'm like, "That's what I said." She's like, <laughs> what are you deaf? It's not what you said. It's not what That's, you said. He's at in all. a tree right now with his kids right now because it's not what you said. Oh my gosh. So yeah, we gotta work on our scared them so bad now they hate each other. Yeah, we gotta work on our <laughs> This is the Team Never Quit Podcast. Podcast. So buckle up, Buttercup. <laughs> <laughs>